I got mail today, as you can intuit by me holding this package. And if you look, maybe something about the size of this package will ring a bell with you to a package that we unboxed a few weeks ago, except that box was enormous and came in a large blue bag. If this rings any bells, then you remember that what we unboxed at that time was the print-on-demand version of Zweihander, the grim and perilous RPG. Well, it turns out that the kind folks at Grim and Perilous Studios saw that video, and they appreciated taking a look at you know how the, the print-on-demand spine and, uh, and pages come out, and how they appear to people like you and me, people who, who buy the stuff. And what they did was they sent me this copy. Now this is the non-print-on-demand version. This is the traditional print version with a different type of binding, uh, which is known in the trades as Smith or Smythe bound binding. I've grown up calling it Smith, so if that's erroneous uh, from your perspective, life is hard. So anyway, let's open it up and take a look. Now it's nice to see that the package is you know, the perfect dimensions for the book and it looks to be quite easy to open, but the other part that I think is really cool is that it's completely encased in tape. <laughs> As you know, I appreciate that a lot. Not only does it make it waterproof, but it just keeps things nice and tight, especially when it has to travel around the world. This apparently comes to us from Kansas City all the way around the world to Daejeon, South Korea. And to celebrate, I'm going to use these. Instead of using the X-Acto knife or tearing it apart with my bare hands, we'll use these big scissors to further freak out those people who can't stand a little excitement in their life when it comes to blades. All right. Was I careful? Are all my fingers still attached? Yes, they are. All right, so we've cut through <laughs> part of the first layer of tape. A little bit more. And yes, and a little bit more. Is he cutting towards himself? Oh, my goodness. The humanity. All right. So this bottom part of the box is open, and the tape is very nicely done all the way around, so everything is still sealed in place. Another cut there, cut here. All right. Look at that. And behold, inside is our favorite thing, bubble wrap. That's fantastic. Okay. Let's put the box over here. Now, one of the questions that has been on my mind is, what am I going to do with two of these? This is an immense book. <laughs> having, them, having two of them on the shelf uh, would, would almost be preposterous, right? Uh, just even getting the original one that I got, the print-on-demand version, on the shelf was a challenge. Well, let's take a look. Here's our spine. It's to the feel. It has a nice matte finish. Okay. Trying to find the. Uh, that's convenient. Okay. There are already, already some dist uh, distances. Differences. I know this has a different cover. Uh, this is the Kickstarter version, which came with this variant cover. Look at that. It's getting even closer. All right, I really like how that looks in this context. This image shows uh, much more action, right, and definitely carries uh, that vibe of, of the old world, the, that grim and perilous aspect to it. It's pretty slick. All right, so this is a really quite a nice matte finish. It's not the type of kind of soft matte that easily catches fingerprint oils and whatnot, which we can often get from Lulu. Uh, 
So I'm, I'm liking it quite a bit. There's no glare. And I'll be able to show you a nice top-down image without having all the, the bars of fluorescence, which is a nice change. All right, now let's do the listen test. Okay, so what you're hearing there is paper, not glue. So let's turn it around to look at the spine from your perspective. As you can see, everything is stitched together. Right? The individual packets of pages are all together, then those are stitched together, and then those are attached to the backing material to provide uh, what is believed to be a much longer lasting spine. And we also see that this edition has ribbons. Now looking at the ends of the pages, we also see what we noted in the other, that this is going to be a full bleed print, meaning that the, the border around the pages goes all the way out to the edge, and so we can, we can see traces of that on the exterior edge of the paper. All right, so let's open it up for real. Let's go to the middle as we did before. Let's see if we get the same middle. Well, we're kind of in the neighborhood of it. Okay. Okay. Now these pages have a little bit of gloss, whereas the print-on-demand pages don't. It's not a high gloss page. But it's nice and thick. And let's find a page with a good chart on it. Now there's one right there. The Prayers of the Custodian has this nice black bar across. And let's see if we can see it through on the other side of the page. And it should be, should be right about here, but there's no sign of it. So that's quite nice. It's a nice heavy page. All right. Let's take a look at some art. What I'm looking for right now is how do the, the blacks come out in this page. So quite a lot of the art uses a lot of shade as it's all black and white art intended for black and white printing. Right. So we've seen this page before. You'll be able to compare this page in the previous video. You might say, but it's on video. It looks exactly the same to me. And well, it, it might. There are some differences. Right? I find that the blacks in this version are a little lighter. Right? Not, quite so, not quite so deep. And the, the gloss on the page uh, works with that. So this actually may be a little easier on the eyes for reading. Right? All right, let's take a look at the spine now that it's sitting open. A little more distance. I'm gonna have to get rid of the bubble wrap, I think. All right, now what made it really easy to look inside the spine the last time was that everything was white, All right? So it, it stood out very clearly. I'm gonna turn it around to see if I can direct more light in there so you get a better look at what's going on. And I'll remove the bubble wrap. So this view gives us a pretty good look at what's going on inside. So we see we've got this heavy paper here, which is you know, glued to the inside front cover and, and forms the first page here. And you can see what, you know, where it joins and where it has to release in order for the book to open. And then this part here, this is cloth and it's folded over, right? And all of these pages in their individual packets are glued to a backing material, and then that backing material is stitched to this fabric, which is then connected to the spine to allow a lot of flexibility. Quite nice. I would say that this version of the book isn't quite so massive. It's the same page count, of course. It'll be interesting to do a comparison shot when I put the final version of this video together and, uh, and see if that impression is true. The books do feel differently, and that's uh, largely attributable to the, the different paper that's in use. So the print-on-demand version uses heavy paper, non-gloss, and has a glossy cover. The Kickstarter version, this version, has a, a matte or non-gloss cover and uh, low-gloss pages, heavier in weight than those used in the print-on-demand version. So, as a reminder, let's look at the print-on-demand version. So far, from this perspective, it just looks like a different cover. But then when we cut down 
to this angle, then we begin to see some difference. Now let's compare the two. If we look over here, here's the traditional printing version of Zweihander sitting neatly, calmly on the shelf. Now a second ago I showed you Zweihander sitting on the shelf in between Quantum Black and Circle of Hands. But as you can intuit, there's just no way that that is going to happen. Could happen if I take out Circle of Hands and Mittermark, maybe Torchbearer. All right. So, what is that all about? Clearly, Zweihander print on demand is significantly larger than how it was through traditional printing methods, as I surmised earlier in the video. How much, you ask? Well, this much. You're looking at Zweihander in the background. Okay, so a significant increase in size in the print-on-demand version. Going beyond simple thickness, we can also discover that there is a difference in height, brought about mostly by the size of the covers in the print-on-demand version, or alternately by how well the covers fit compared to the page size in the traditional printed version. Placing one on top of the other with their spines and lower edge lined up, we find this amount of difference in height and this amount of difference in width. I want to be clear, although the print-on-demand version is physically larger, they contain the same content. So if you have the Kickstarter version, you do not somehow have less book. <laughs> you might have less material, but you don't have less information. And if you have the print-on-demand version, you were not gifted with more. It's the same book in two different formats. Now, just for completeness sake, let's compare the print-on-demand Zweihander to the print-on-demand Mass of Nyarlathotep Companion. The Companion was produced by Lulu, and Zweihander was produced by Lightning Source. Now, what I find interesting is that the Massive Nyarlathotep Companion is actually larger, not in terms of physical space, but in terms of page count. It's over 700 pages. Zweihander is under 700 pages. But the size differential is noticeable, and they use the same binding material, or the same binding process. What's different? We have to conclude that the paper is different. Zweihander uses a heavyweight paper, as this is the premium print edition. The Mass of Nyarlathotep Companion, while definitely not skimping on the paper, uh, you can see right away has a higher degree of transparency. You can actually read through the page should you want to. So, the past few years have brought us quite a few innovations in print-on-demand. We have full-color interiors in some products, and now we have massive, <laughs> incredibly large page counts. What's next? Who can say? Traditional printing, still more expensive, does offer some advantages, but it's really hard to beat the convenience of being able to print on demand and enjoy the lower prices that that can entail. All right. I'd like to thank Daniel Fox for the promotional consideration of sending us this review copy of Zweihander. I really appreciate it. It's, it's a great thing for this channel to be able to do a comparison like this. It wouldn't have happened otherwise. Now, those watching two videos in a row about Zweihander may be curious about what does the system entail, especially if they have had no experience with it yet. If we look at the table of contents, we see that, you know, every page is packed with information, and there's more to the table, com table of contents than just these two pages. But if we look at the How to Play chapter, we'll notice it's only eight pages long. The system itself 
is quite straightforward and is primarily based on percentile. We want to roll under our skill level with modifiers adjusted by difficulty. And doubles will count as criticals. Doubles within your success range, critical success. Doubles outside your success range, critical failure. So, quite simple. A roll of 100 will always be a critical failure. A roll of 0, 1 will always be a critical success. So, it's roll low, as low as you can. There's a lot about characters and character creation. If this game is about anything, it's about exploring its setting and its characters. Another thing I wanted to point out was the combat section. Usually the combat chapter is the most complicated or convoluted part of a game, but even here we see that it starts on page 240 and it ends on page 256, which is not to say that there aren't more rules about combat or about running the game scattered here and there, but they're introduced in connection with their specific topics. So you may have a character talent or a creature ability provide you with a different rule, but for the most part, anything you really know or need to know about running this game, you can find in the how to play or in the combat section, which is pretty cool. So if we take another look at the table of contents, we see that what we begin with is basically what might, what might be called a player's guide. We start with an introduction to the game and to the world, how to play, character creation, we get into the professions, then skills, then specific character talents, then what's called trappings, finally into combat in chapter 8, Hazards and Healing, the Grimoire for Spells and whatnot. And that might be considered the end of that book. Then we get into the Game Mastery section, which is Chapter 11, and the Best Jerry in Chapter 12. And we round things off with a scenario called A Bitter Harvest, and then a lengthy and useful appendix. The other point of comparison is weight. The traditionally printed version of Zweihander, released via Kickstarter, is significantly heavier. So if you're going to be toting this around from place to place, you may actually want to opt for the larger print-on-demand book. It's lighter. All right, so this concludes our examination and comparison of the Kickstarter, traditionally printed version of Zweihander, and the Lightning Source print-on-demand version of Zweihander, with the added bonus of uh, comparison to Lulu's largest print-on-demand, the Mass of Nerolithotep Companion. Subsequent videos on Zweihander will focus on the system and what we can expect from using a system like it. Thanks for watching.